Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, September 23rd. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. And also if you trade Bitcoin, I'll do a bonus analysis at the end. First off, a couple of clarifications. Number one, the candlestick that you see right there will be moving around and changing. That is because the market's still open for a small amount of time. But I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And second, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So ticker symbol number one, DJT. Quite the rough movement here over the past several days, but this is a well-known enough stock uh, where when you have certain situations, it's, I think it's worth keeping an eye on. And what sort of situations were these sorts? So let me be very, very clear. As I draw this trend line into play, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm not trying to imply that that's a great discovery or special skill. In fact, the exact opposite. I think a lot of people have drawn that same trend line or something very, very close to it. And I say all that because when a lot of people are watching the same levels and wondering the same thing, call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can produce some very dynamic movement. So while there is no such thing as a guarantee, is it valid? Is it plausible that if the price were to come up here and break up through there, that that break in and of itself could create additional buying pressure? That is certainly a plausible scenario. Again, not guaranteed to happen, but I don't think would it'll you know, be shocking to anybody just based on the nature of you know that very well-defined uh, tread line. As far as areas of support, no need to overcomplicate this. Just ask a very basic question. Where did the party finally stop today for the bears? And that party finally stopped right there at about $13.50. So Overall, rough movement, yes, but now it's just a question of is this thing starting to bottom out and can the price get a break up through that trot line? And if it does, does that generate additional momentum? We'll see what happens. Next one here, ticker symbol XPON, and this is a very, very ugly looking chart, but for you longer time viewers, you know what I'm gonna say next. There can be opportunity in the ugly, uh, and I should note that if you're not disciplined, if you're not gonna manage risk, I mean, you shouldn't be trading in the first place, but you definitely should not be trying to trade situations like this because this is definitely a higher risk, but uh, if you do get a movement, uh, you could be looking at a very, very nice scenario. But the reason why I still think there's some potential here and there's some opportunity is yes, this has been a nasty pullback. There's no doubt about that. But the pullback is now starting to approach a couple of very key technical levels, that purple line being the 50 period moving average, that pink line being the 200 period moving average, and those within the world of charts can tend to act as support. Again, tend, not guaranteed. But my point here is that if you can you know, honor stop losses, honor and be disciplined, if the price comes down around here and gets even a modest bounce relative to what was being risked, you could be looking at a very good risk versus reward scenario. So if you like these ugly stocks, but you like, you, th you know, there's opportunity in them and you like the penny stocks and you like kind of all these different ingredients there, and of course you're a disciplined trader, then this could definitely be something worthwhile. Next one, NBY, and uh, kind of a, a bummer of the last 30 minutes. You can see right now, quite a bit of a pullback is occurring. Now that doesn't mean the entire chart's ruined, but uh, it, it's kind of a little damper on the day. But nonetheless, let's get some things mapped out here. So key area of resistance moving into next week, I would say right up there at the 95 cent mark. You can see that essentially twice, both there and there, the price got rejected from it. Sure, the price did go above it right there, uh, but that momentum didn't last very long before the price uh, has pulled back below it. So from a breakout standpoint, definitely public enemy number one next week, 95 cents. In terms of areas of support, I think that really the, the main and key level right now is all about that purple line right there, the 50 period simple moving average. Keyword certainly being moving because I understand the price is up here. That line's way down there. But as time goes by, that line will move itself higher and higher as time goes by. So it's basically like an overall trend line that's drawn, it, drawn itself for you. So as long as the price stays above the quote unquote trend line, then the overall uh, you know, trend is still in the bull's favor. But yes, 95 cents I think is the most interesting dynamic about this one. But it, like I said at the beginning here, uh, that last 30 minutes, put a damper on it because now it's got to travel quite a distance just to get back up to that level. I mean, that's still totally possible. Uh, but, you know, had the price closed up around here somewhere, you know, it made it a lot more, uh, you know, realistic to think that a bigger breakout could occur. But we'll see what happens with it next week. Next one here, PLTR, and speaking of breakouts, this is the good stuff right now and why I let you do these when the market is still open because you can see as I speak right now, the price is fluctuating right at this red line, which will mean a little bit more to those of you that have watched past videos, but I have talked about this 36.90 mark as a key area of resistance, and you can see right now uh, the price is doing battle with it, which always leads to an exciting question, this question being, is this the start of a much bigger move? Now think about that question. It makes no sense to ask that question if nothing worthwhile is happening. 
But in this situation, something worthwhile is happening, right? There's a breakout, there's a battle going on. So is this breakout just starting or are the bears gonna win the battle and push back downwards? Cause that, that is, that's a very realistic you know, possibility. But that is a two-sided coin because the other realistic possibility is, we well, have yeah, the bulls winning, this thing's getting ready to rock and roll again. So like I said, that's why those questions are very, very interesting. So breakout is occurring. Is this the start of something bigger? If it is, I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust this level up to this next key battleground right up there at 37.35. But yeah, very, very nice last 30 minutes of the day here. Next one here, ticker symbol NVDA. And overall, it's hanging in there. Yeah, it had a, a bigger a bit of a pullback here, but all things considered, the price is going sideways, but we also have some very well-defined levels here. So from a very near-term support standpoint, definitely gotta keep an eye on that level of support right there. And then coming across the top in terms of resistance, check out the purple line there, 50 period moving average in action. You can see it's rejected the price several times here. And then just from a bigger picture standpoint, is there is a bearish pattern. We have that level here, we have that support, then we have that support across the top, and that would be a bear pennant pattern. Now, just because something's a bullish pattern doesn't mean it's for sure gonna go up. Same is true for bearish patterns. Just because there's a bearish pattern does not mean for sure guaranteed the price is headed downwards. I'm just saying I'd be a little skeptical, I'd be a little leery on this one early next week to see how first this bear pennant pattern plays out. But all things considered, let me zoom back out, you can see Still much higher than where it was, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. So it's not like any of this is a, a you know total train wreck. But just in the very, very near term, like I said, be a little skeptical and sit back and see how this bear pennant plays out. Real quick, want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online webinar that I'm offering next week. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk within your trading, then definitely get signed up for the free live webinar. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box, or if you're watching right at my website, there's an area on the webpage you can use to sign up. So like I said, if you've been enjoying, then definitely get signed up for the free class. Next one, ticker symbol BNZI, and very, very interesting situation here. Nice move. Bigger pullback, not a total crash, but what making this extra spicy is check out the last 30 minutes here, starting to head back up, but it hasn't quite broken through what I would consider the main area of resistance, that being right there at the $5.70 mark, which has essentially been the top part of this channel all afternoon long. So coming to life, and it certainly makes sense now to throw out the question, okay, is this level about to be broken and then get more momentum next week? So going back to that, those questions, always exciting when you're able to be asking them, but of course, something worthwhile needs to happen. And the worthwhile event right here is the fact that it leveled out and then the last 30 minutes is you know that extra spice to it. In terms of areas of support, first key level is just asking the question, where did the bleeding finally stop today? And that was right down there at $4.70. But if that level cannot quite hold up, next key area of support to keep an eye on would be those moving averages down there again. Pink line, 200 period moving average. Purple line, 50 period moving average. But all in all, very, very interesting final 30 minutes. We'll see if that momentum carries into next week. Next one, LUNR. I think this is my third day now in a row covering it, but this thing keeps on putting those higher highs and higher lows, and that is the name of the game. First thing I'm gonna do is adjust a level of support, and the question becomes, what direction is this adjustment occurring? I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this area of support right up there to 865 as the newest ideal level of support, and you saw me adjust that upward. So assuming you're bullish, whenever levels of support need to be adjusted in the upwards direction, that's definitely always a good thing. And I wanna you know, emphasize though that 865 is not some sort of do or die level, so if the price falls below it, that doesn't mean the entire chart's epically destroyed or anything like that. But preferably speaking, what would make the chart look the strongest? Certainly if the price can stay above there, but then from the overarching standpoint, as I've already talked about in a couple other charts, just watch that purple line, and as that moving average continues to move higher and higher, as long as the price stays above that, then overall the trend is still fully in the bull's favor. In terms of areas of resistance, main battleground to watch in the very near term, gonna be right there at the $9.25 mark. And then after that, next key level up there right around 980. So I'm just gonna leave it up there. But yeah, if you wanna throw a, a line down that level too, you can do that. But overall, the chart's fine. As long as the price keeps on putting in those higher highs and higher lows, that is what matters most. Next one, TSLA Tesla. And overall, this one is hanging in there fine. Yeah, it's a little rough if you're a day trader and you bought right there on the opening 30 minutes because the price did pull back quite a bit. But big picture wise, everything is still perfectly fine. I'm gonna just go ahead and get rid of that level. And as far as supports are concerned, yeah, you guessed it. I'm once again going to be talking about that 50 period moving average. And you can see this one's actually moved itself. Uh, it's not super close, but it's certainly within the general area of where the price is at. In fact, just caught, this just caught my eye. So let's see how this matches out. So if we were to look at the lows for today, 
Yeah, you can see that the low for today, which would certainly be considered an area of resistance, pretty close to that 50 period moving average, especially when you remember this is a moving average. So that line is gonna move itself higher and that eventually be basically the same value of that. So if the price were to come down there, no guarantees, but you'd be more than reasonable to think that that sort of action could produce a bounce. And then in terms of areas of resistance, still have the overarching level up there at $244. But after today's price movement, I would say that there's a nearer term one right now at the two, uh, $240.85. And let me change that just to look a little different there. So keep an eye on that in the near term. But like I said, big picture wise, everything's still fine with Tesla. Next one, AMD and very, very exciting last 30 minutes. Check out the volume bar, really came in strong and the price was able to break back above that area right there. So now that brings about that question, okay, is this the start of something even bigger? I'm gonna go through this quicker because I wanna respect your time, but again, to be fair, maybe it's not, maybe this thing just rolls right back over, but that is a two-sided coin because maybe it is, and maybe this thing is getting ready to rock and roll back up to these highs at 159.20. So that's really the main thing about AMD here that uh, it makes it very interesting. Again, rough start, went sideways, showed signs of strength, and then even more strength as the price broke up through that area. So yeah, all that occurring also on very, very solid volume. So yeah, is AMD getting ready to curl back upwards and retest those highs and who knows, potentially even higher next week? We'll see what happens. Next one, TQQQ, and overall a good movement, especially just from the bigger picture standpoint. And this will mean a little bit more to those of you that watched previous videos, but the price came down here and ultimately did find support right at that green line right there, 68.75. Did temporarily drop below it a little bit, but that bearish momentum did not last very long. Price came back up and then you can see right there that level went right back to acting as support and then ultimately got a nice bounce in the upward direction. Not a big fan of that last 30 minutes right there. That candle suggests maybe this thing needs to come back down there and retest uh, the lows right there or because of the 50 period moving average, it might be a double whammy of support, which again, as I talked about in the previous one, not a guarantee, but more than reasonable to think that if that purple line moves itself closer to the 68.75 mark, that that area, generally speaking, could produce a bounce as a, a good firm area of support. Uh, so that's, I think, the most interesting dynamic due to this candle is, is the pullback going to occur? And does it come back down to that 68.75 mark, which could realistically provide a, a nice little bounce point in terms of areas of resistance? Yes, you have that overarching level up here, but I'm gonna just go ahead and dress it down and remove it down to here because you can see perfectly at 70.67 both from the opening part of the day and then the last part of the day, both times the price was rejected at that level. So a very clear key area and key battleground headed into next week. I will get to Bitcoin here in just a second, but for you stock traders out there, again, if you like what you saw here and you wanna learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used, then definitely go get signed up for the free live webinar. It'll be next week, Thursday, September 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. All right, now let's talk some Bitcoin. One quick clarification here, I am now using the four hour time frame. So each one of these candlesticks here represents four hours and that's because Bitcoin is open 24 seven and I want this analysis to remain relevant for as long as possible. And by using a longer time frame and approaching this with some questions, I'll make sure that this all, you know, it is, is relevant all weekend long. So as of right now, there has been a pullback. There's no doubt about that but you have to ask yourself, well, what was happening before this pullback? Well, there was this nice breakout right here. So in all actuality, I've just kind of drawn a little miniature bull flag pattern, but let's walk through some questions and let's just say you're watching this video Sunday afternoon. So Sunday afternoon, question number one becomes, where is the price at relative to 61,300? As long as you're answering the question that the price is above there, everything is still perfectly fine because let's say this occurs, the price comes down here, and it's sitting right at that level. Again, from a pattern standpoint, what would you still have? You'd have a downwards pullback, you'd have that big move up, you'd still have a bull flag pattern. So there is nothing wrong at all. In fact, as long as you're answering the question that the price is above that level, absolute worst case scenario, you'd still just have a bull flag pattern. Now, if you're saying, well, actually Clay, the price is down below that level. Okay, next immediate question, where's the price at relative to 59,200? If you're answering the question, the price is down below there, then that's where things start to get a little sketchy. Now, where do things get totally sketchy? Where do things get totally bearish? If somehow you're answering the question that the price is down below 57,500. Now, I doubt you're answering the question in that way, uh, but that would be the that would be the ma massive problem point in terms of something has gone wrong and the bears have all of a sudden grown in quite a bit of strength. So uh, keep your eye on those levels right there. And then as far as, you know, just kind of overall common sense, if you're saying, well, yeah, Clay, the price is above that area and now it's way up here. Well, that would just be telling you that Bitcoin is continuing very nicely with the uptrend because that would imply that the price has broken through new highs and that's always a good thing. So keep your eye on those levels, walk yourself through those questions. That'll keep this video relevant for all weekend long. 
And as I invited the stock traders, I'm inviting you as a Bitcoin and crypto trader to definitely go get signed up for this free live webinar because what you learn about can and certainly should be used within the world of crypto and Bitcoin. So go get signed up. It'll be next week, Thursday, September 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy these top 10 videos, hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button and go get signed up for that free class. Have a great weekend.